Let me ask you a question. You like playing football? I love playing football. For a special breed of men called Leatherheads, the rules were simple. You hit anybody that comes near him. There were no rules. Oh, I like him. The first football helmet was worn in 1893 by Admiral Joseph Reeves in the Army vs. Navy game. Reeves wore this ingenious invention made by an Annapolis shoemaker after being warned by a Navy doctor that said if he was to be kicked in the head once more, he would die or go mentally insane. In 1896, George Barclay designed a head harness in order to prevent serious injury and cauliflower ear. The next revolution in football helmet technology was invented in 1917 with the introduction of the ZH helmet. This helmet was unique from past designs because of its suspension, ventilation, and communication innovations. Using padding as suspension to separate the outer shell of the helmet from the person's head allowed for less impact on players' skulls. This, along with ear holes used to allow for better communication and ventilation, made this an important advancement in helmet technology. 1935 brought the innovation of the first face mask by Vern McMillan. The face mask acted as a preventative measure against nose injuries and allowed the helmet to absorb the impact of a tackle. Four years later, in 1939, the first plastic helmet was created by the John T. Riddle Company in Chicago. This new material was lighter, durable, and most importantly, safer. In 1986, the first polycarbonate helmet was introduced. These helmets were even lighter and far more durable than its predecessors. It would greatly reduce the injuries and the number of concussions found in players. The primary model used still to this day is the Riddle VSR4. Concussions still remain a major health issue through the game. Every year, over 100,000 concussions occur in all levels of football. And 60% of these are from head-to-head -head collisions. In an impact lasting just 15 milliseconds, a player's head, on average, experiences almost 100 Gs of force. And collisions on special teams can result in forces of up to 190 Gs. In the NFL, the average speed of a head-to-head -head impact, the velocity of both heads combined, is 20 miles per hour, with the struck player's head decelerating 14 miles per hour. According to studies done by Sports Science's chief medical advisor, Dr. Basil Aish, this 15 millisecond impact is equivalent to getting smashed in the head with a sledgehammer. In the last 10 years, the average number of days a concussed player is out has more than doubled, and even improved helmet technology is only able to reduce an 80G impact to 40Gs still several times when an F-16 pilot experiences and more than enough to cause a concussion or neck fracture. For Sports Science on ESPN, I'm John Brinkus. In response to the newfound awareness to the dangers of concussions, companies began to produce helmets designed to reduce the risk of concussions. The next innovation following the typical polycarbonate helmet was the Riddle Revolution helmet in 2002. This helmet was specifically designed to prevent concussions and ensure comfort. After its introduction, players began to promote concussion awareness and prevention. This new helmet addressed the public's growing concern over the grossly high number of concussion victims found in football. Following this new advancement, more designs have been produced focused on tackling the issue of concussion prevention. Even though these are welcome improvements, new problems have arisen within the game. With these new helmets becoming safer and safer, players have begun leading with their heads for tackling. This in turn led to an increase in the number of concussions experienced by players. The NFL had no choice but to reform the rules of football to protect the players. Since then they have made it a penalty to lead with their head and players can even receive a fine for this offense. Since 1948 helmets have not only been a piece of safety equipment but also a medium to display team identity. Fred Gerke, a player for the Los Angeles Rams, was the first to set this trend. He came up with the idea to paint a team logo on his helmet. Gerke presented his idea to Dan Reeves, the owner of the Rams at the time, and Reeves approved it. Since then, the idea has caught on. Now, helmets have reached an iconic status, where teams are recognized for their unique designs, 
that they have bestowed upon their sacred headgear, such as Michigan's wing style, the Steelers' one-sided helmet, and Oregon's sweet Rose Bowl helmet. Another way the football helmet helped to revolutionize the game was the introduction of the radio transmitter in the back of the helmet. This brainchild of John Campbell and George Sarles allowed the coaches to make play calls directly from the sidelines, which reduced substitutions for both offense and defense. This, along with the helmet's many other advancements, have aided in the evolution of the game and the preservation of its athletes. We just gotta do what we do! We play like we play! We be us! We be special! We smell greatness! We finish small! Yes. From the top! One, two, where do you three, four, where do you five, six, where do you seven, eight, where do you 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 Like, yeah, here comes the, 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 here comes